This week's episode of In the Trenches, breaking down the Northwestern game with Doug Skeen. We're starting in 13-25 of the first quarter. Uh, a running play where Davion Smith has to make a blitzing linebacker miss. And once he does, this play is really well blocked by everybody up front to create a big gain for Davion Smith. It's a real simple uh, uh, power running play out of a doubles formation, two tight ends. You got a front side combo with Cole and Braden. Uh, the defensive line it looks like they're slanting right, which allows Braden to release to the left mid inside linebacker. The center and right guard are comboing to the backside linebacker, and the guy that misses over the backfield here is really on the bottom of the screen. There's a little twist game where they're bringing a blitz on the outside in, and he is unaccounted for because I think Michigan was assuming maybe he was going to lock up the tight end when he released, pulling him out of the box, which he did not. Good thing uh, Smith makes him miss, finds a well-blocked play front side for a big game. Here we are, 4-35 of the first quarter, a third and one set up, and uh, Michigan uses a little bit of deception here, convincing Northwestern they're going to go to Davion Smith. Instead, they hand off to Joe Carriage for a big gain. Well, it's a great, great call because the entire defense is focused in on number four in the backfield there, Smith. And this is a simple little uh, combo block front side with Cole and Brayton to front side linebacker. But Northwestern has a slant defensive line called on this where the defensive line is going to slant to their right on your television screen. It's to the top of the screen, and the linebackers are going to take the opposite gaps. And with them keying on Smith and the slanting the D-line to the right, it allows for a free go for the left guard to get up to that front side linebacker and secure his edge. And Carriage is gone with his blazing speed into the secondary. It's fun to watch. Here we are, 13-20, 13-18 in the second quarter. Michigan calls up a, uh, a a screen pass to Davion Smith. There's just a little bit of timing off with the offense. And then, you know, this Northwestern defense has been pretty good all year, and they call the right play, and they execute really well against this. They sure do. And, and what happens here in, in the beginning, it was just age formation, two tight air, two slots, two wide outs. They're on the, Michigan's on the right hash, so it's basically ace, the tailback screen right, but it's to the boundary, so immediately you've cut a lot of space out to work with. Northwestern has a zone blitz on here, or they've got their defensive end here dropping out into the cover of the flat. The front side linebacker to the offensive right has got the hook to curl zone. He reads uh, the screen play right away. The defensive end who dropped out there is now off the numbers, and Kalis is forced to take a cut attempt there. You've got the other defensive linemen who quick, were quick to read screen, bleeding in from the backside, and a free linebacker coming front side. It was the right defensive call against the wrong offensive play from our point of view, and it's a no gain or a one-yard gain for Michigan. So here we are at 9-12 of the second quarter, and Northwestern tries to run outside has no luck, they had no luck all day. And that's because, as you point out to me, Doug, uh, something that the Michigan secondary allows the linebackers to do. Well, what I think I see here, Spath, is, is I see a secondary who's got them locked up, either press man at the bottom of the screen, or you got a loose man at the top of the screen. Hill, the safety, comes down into the box, he's got the backside uh, reverse or backside contain on any, anything involving the ball coming his way. What that does is it allows Gideon and Morgan to be 100% run-oriented. They don't have a pass responsibility here, so as soon as they see flow, they are downhill hard. And the defensive line complements it well by allowing zero push out of the Northwestern offensive line. But you see Gideon off, Gideon off the front edge here, and Morgan is right behind. Those guys have zero responsibility in the pass. It just gives them a big old green light to go attack the ball. Here we are, Doug, 225 of the second quarter, and a read option play where Jake Rudock keeps the ball, set up by the fact that they ran this earlier in the game, and he did not keep it. Well, they ran, the, they ran this play earlier in the game, and they saw that the, the linebackers from Northwestern and the defensive end bending hard toward the running back keeping the ball. Smith is obviously their run key. Stop Smith. But when they come back and they run this play, you see the same exact thing. You'll see the, the linebackers, the two inside linebackers, downhill hard to the front side. The entire Michigan offensive line is blocking left, zone block left. You leave the defensive end at the, at the offensive right. You leave him unblocked. The quarterback reads him. If he bends down the line, he keeps it and takes off with a run. Now, what's interesting is that defensive end recovers and gets to 
cut off Rudock. Rudock just has so much space back the other way. Because this play was set up by an effective running game, the linebackers and everybody bailed so hard to the right, there was no one there when he made the comeback and the cutback into the middle of the field to get the first down. Doug, we're at the start of the third quarter, and here Northwestern tries to go outside again. Michigan's got it well defended, and then at the last minute, uh, just, I mean, this is where it comes down to player execution. Desmond Morgan is in the right spot and then just takes a bad angle at the last second. Well, it, the defensive line is, is tightened up here, and with Royce Jenkins Stone at the bottom of the defense, tightening up to the edge. Stone's got that uh, that H back, or what the Northwestern Wildcats call their super back. Wormley's going to move to the inside B gap, uh, and Morgan's got the edge. Morgan comes up here and runs support, sees the big offensive lineman coming at him, and just hesitates for a moment. And that hesitation allows that back to get to the outside edge, and now we're running from behind. And unfortunately, the linebacker took a bad angle. He had it. He just let it go for that moment. And in big-time college football with speed like that in the field, that results in a 12-yard gain from Northwestern. Here we are, Doug, uh, about 13.47 to go in the third quarter. Uh, an interesting play call. Well, it's, it's a good play call, but Northwestern has a blitz, a, a linebacker blitz. Uh, kind of eludes Michigan's uh, blockers, but Davion Smith just does what Davion Smith does. Well, this is awesome. Uh, first and foremost, you see Northwestern's going to have a run blitz called here where they're going to slant their nose tackle across the center's face of the opposite A gap. Then they're going to twist those linebackers interior to hit the opposite A and B gaps. This is designed to, to uh, cause problems for combo blocks with offensive linemen. But Smith takes care of this on his own by making the first linebacker miss, makes the secondary guy miss, and then accelerates his feet on contact and just turns up the RPMs on everything and just starts grinding out yards. What I love is Chesson comes in here and turns himself into an offensive lineman and absolutely destroys and pancake blocks a guy at what looks like the 45-yard line, lands on his head and rubs his uh, belt buckle on his nose. Man, I love that. That's a helmet sticker block right there. And the rest is just all Smith saying, you're not as tough as I am. Doug, 927 of the third quarter. And again, Northwestern tries to stretch it out a little bit. Michigan does a phenomenal job uh, blocking off the front side. And then on the back side, when the running back tries to make a cutback lane, Willie Henry is just waiting for him. Well, we got a blitz coming front side here with the front side linebacker coming through. But the blitz is all fine and great. It's, in, in my view, it's icing on the cake here. Northwestern's trying to get to the, the offensive right edge. They can't because Taco Charlton and the front side blitz and also uh, the middle of that defensive line is getting such a great push that there is nowhere to go. So when that linebacker, or the, sorry, the running back puts his foot in the ground to cut back, the backside blocks are just as ineffective, and Willie Henry is waiting for that guy there just to swallow him and eat him alive, along with Bolden. Uh, that's great defense, just great defense. Doug, one more defensive play before we get back to your favorite side of the ball. Uh, 145 to go in the third quarter. Jenkins Stone is a guy that, that came in and is playing for Mario Jamudia, and we've been saying that he's great against the run, not as dynamic against the pass, but here he goes, and he, he really sets this play up for Michigan. This is awesome. you got to watch, watch the defensive ends, Henry and Charlton. They just come up the field and put both of these offensive tackles on roller skates and collapse him under the quarterback's hips. But in the middle, you'll see Royce Jenkins Stone absolutely target and drill the offensive center who's being occupied by Hurst. He sees Stone comes in and just drills him onto the ground. He's useless laying on the ground watching the rest of the carnage. And the result is this quarterback hating life, absolutely getting bent in half by three or four Michigan helmets there. That's awesome. Doug, final play of this In the Trenches episode. First play of the fourth quarter. This is about a seven-yard gain for Derek Green. Uh, that as an offensive lineman, you just love this play. Well, this is as old as is, is, uh, the hills and the dirt and the ground. Uh, this is simply just line up. We are going to run this football down your throat, and there's nothing you can do to stop us. It's man blocking across the front. He, the, the tackles and tight ends are blocking the defensive ends. That leaves four defenders in the middle. You got a combo block with the left tackle, left guard to front side linebacker. You got a combo block with center and right guard to backside linebacker. And Huma is the plumber. And for anybody that hasn't heard me say it, the plumber is just the guy that comes over and fixes stuff. 
So Lumley just plows up in there blocking the first opposite color, and you're just looking for push. And Smith gets, or um, I'm sorry, Green finds the crease, and then we're just plowing forward. We're plowing forward. The feet are churning, and the bodies are falling forward in Michigan's favor, and you just grind out yards. And, and everybody in the stadium knew he was going to do it because at this point in the game, Hartball was just working on his power running game, getting ready for next week, which I can't wait for, by the way. Yeah, well, that was uh, that's another great episode of In the Trenches. We'll talk next week after Michigan beats Michigan State. Go Blue.